tobacco industry will not forget in a hurry. In a landmark verdict, India's apex court ordered a temporary ban on diesel vehicles above 2,000 cc in the Delhi national capital region till 31st of March. That's, of course, in a bid to clean up the capital's toxic air. Adding fuel to the anti-diesel fire is Volkswagen's debacle, which has put diesel technology under the scanner globally. Is this the end of the road for diesel technology? Rajai Banerjee and Shweta Kotari find out. In India, the diesel uproar is hurting automakers in general and SUV maker m and in particular. The Supreme Court's partial ban on diesel cars over 2,000 cc in the NCR has abruptly altered the company's future expansion plans. Currently, Delhi NCR adds around 1,400 vehicles every day, accounting for over 7% of total auto sales in the country. m and relies on this region for only 2% of its total volumes. However, fearing a diesel backlash in other cities, m and has now decided to speed up its petrol development plans with its South Korean partner Sangyong, starting with the first ever petrol-powered compact SUV, KUV 100. As many of you have already written, that Mahindra perhaps is the most affected uh, by the short-term uh, you know, or, or the intermediate uh, Supreme Court ruling. That's a fact because we do make the most uh, above 2,000 cc vehicles, uh, SUVs, uh, diesel driven. As you know that we have the TUV 300 available which meets the requirement of sub 2 liter engine. Uh, we have just uh, announced our KUV 100 which will be available for sale starting 15th of January uh, in Delhi and all parts of India. Uh, and we have other products like Burrito. Uh, that can be purchased in place of uh, the, the vehicle that, that may have been booked, which now are banned for registration from, uh, from, from Delhi. Car makers claim that in the last 15 years since the time Bharat Stage 1 emission norms were adopted by diesel manufacturers, total emissions of particulate matter 2.5 has come down by over 80%, while NOx has been reduced by 50%. Experts say that going from the existing BS4 norms to BS5 would make diesel cars more expensive than their petrol counterparts, adding further to the diesel uncertainty. I think when we move on to Euro 5, mm -hmm. that's when the price will go up. Yes. Euro 6 won't make that much of a difference. I think Euro 5 will certainly result in a price increase. Mm -hmm. And for diesel engines which are fitted onto smaller cars, mm -hmm. which may lower cost cars, mm -hmm. that increase will be much more significant than it will be for the higher priced cars. Right. Because you know, if you have a car costing 15 lakhs mm -hmm. and you go above 50,000, it's not such a major thing. If you have a car costing 5 lakhs mm -hmm. and you go above 50,000, because the cost yes. will be the same, That's right. it's much more significant. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling that when this happens, there will be an adverse impact on the sale of the lower-end diesel cars. Even the traditional price gap between petrol and diesel has been shrinking down from as high as 20 rupees to a litre two years back to around 14 rupees now. This has made the case for a diesel car less compelling. In financial year 2013, diesel sales accounted for nearly half of total passenger vehicles that fell to 37% last fiscal and is less than one-third so far this financial year. But any talk of the diesel mess would be incomplete without adequately mentioning the Volkswagen scandal, a scam that sent ripple effects across the globe and convinced many that diesel simply cannot be clean. Earlier this year, I caught up with the global chairman of Bosch, Volkmar Denner. Remember, Bosch is one of the key suppliers to Volkswagen, in fact, supplying critical kits to all the affected Volkswagen models that had to be recalled. I asked Denner the implications of the Volkswagen scandal on Bosch, the implications on the auto industry, and I also caught up with Philip Wonsar, the India head of BMW and a veteran in the Indian automobile industry, listening to what they had to tell me. It's something which uh, concerns us a lot, the, uh, the issues that happened, but I don't think so. I think the, comp the competitiveness and the competence of the, uh, of the German uh, automotive industry is very, very high, including uh, the, uh, the suppliers. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you have to take into account that uh, now with Bosch, with Conti and with the uh, ZF after the acquisition of TRW, we now have uh, three very strong uh, mm. global players uh, mm. coming, coming from Germany. But so this uh, clearly demonstrates, mm -hmm. uh, this I think is a very 
uh, competent. We are not manipulating any engines. Um, uh, we may, of course, we have some concerns about the diesel engine, and I can tell you that the diesel engine is one of the most attractive engines uh, you can have, and the uh, targets in uh, some areas in the world are really tough concern, concerning CO2 emissions, and you can only manage this emissions with a diesel, efficient diesel engine, which we have. While the auto industry is vehemently opposing the move, there is little choice but to comply and de-risk as Eminem is doing with the introduction of its petrol engine. This also serves as a lesson for both auto manufacturers and government to be proactive and not be forced to clean up. In New Delhi with Rona Joy Banerjee, I am Shweta Kothari. And with that,